always. Yeah, welcome back to Match Day Live. We are absolutely thrilled in the studio. Um, our new studio is bringing us lots of luck tonight because Manchester City have beaten Wolves 5-1. I had to double check there because I, I, I couldn't remember how many we'd scored because there were so many shots going on at the end. But City have done it. That means there are two Premier League games left in this season. If we win two Premier League games, we will retain our title. Sean, what did you make of the game? Enjoyed it so much. Um, just the, the passage of plays and the great football that they was playing along the way, even when they wasn't creating chances, they just demoralised Wolves. And I just don't know what to say. Ghost, what do you think of it, man? <laughs> well, in a word, I would say it was filthy. <laughs> it was filthy football by City. The, how we moved the ball. And here, here's what I want to say right off the bat. Wolves did not play badly. When you look at a 5-1 result, you think, Wolves or the, the team played badly. Wolves did not play badly. We just played such a high standard of football. How we moved the ball in, in every department from, from the mid, from the defense to midfield up, up top, moving the ball, the interchanging. Um, it was just some seamless football. Some of it was the most beautiful football I've seen and I'm probably getting a bit carried away. I'm looking and I'm seeing guys queuing up for, ball, for balls to be just slid across, but the build up, to, to, to the goals and, and some of the actions, I, I thought was absolutely amazing. This team is a joy to watch. Pep Guardiola, in, in his way of how he finds a way in big games to play the way, oh, it, it was some filthy football. It really was. <laughs> we were absolutely loving it. There is Kevin De Bruyne picking up his match ball. Of course, four goals he got this evening. Three in the first half and then he added another one in the 60th minute. Nathan Ake as well coming on, Sean. Obviously, Amrit Lepore went off. We were worried there, but... As always, Nathan Ake, when he is called on, he steps up. Yeah, he showed a very mature performance when he came on because he's playing with a not a recognised centre back to help him if he's in bad areas, and he had to do, be the one to help further in some senses. Obviously, you know, further he's going to try and help everybody, but I feel like he, he, it was a solid performance. He kept the ball moving, um, and it was great to see how quick they was moving the ball. They didn't slow down their tempo, even when Wolves came at them, they just stayed with the same pace through the duration of the game. And that the, the more they did that, the spaces just opened up for um, KDB. He just seemed to pop up in all these little pockets of space. And like we said at the beginning in the game, if you give this man space, whether he's scoring or not, he will find a way to cause you some serious problems. And that's what he did all night. Yeah, and his fourth goal, we were particularly loving it. What a, what a team goal that was. It really was. And I was, I was looking at it and thinking, well, who hasn't actually touched the ball? Because the ball was moved. I think every player has essentially touched it. Touched. And again, the, the, the pressing from Wolves, they're really trying to win this ball back. It's not as though they're just moving across and shifting. They're putting proper pressure on and we're moving the ball with great quality and pace, the ability to maneuver it into areas. And, and De Bruyne, you just think, like, he gets the ball. I, I used to think he was right-footed. And he's got the ball on his left foot, and you just think, he just strikes a clean ball. He strikes a clean ball. It's, it, was, it was a beautiful goal because everyone is sort of involved in it, and they're really applying pressure. And I, I, I'm just in amazement of how we perform, and on a big game to be able to deliver, not only that goal, but to deliver the performance, I think was brilliant. It's not an exaggeration to say as well, we scored five. It could have been six, seven, eight, nine. And we did make five um, in the 84th minute. Raheem Sterling scored, Sean. Now, he had a few chances in the game that he'd missed. So the fact for me that he kept going, he kept having the self-belief and he kept taking the chances it just speaks volumes about him. Got that goal in the 84th minute to make it five. Um, yeah, and that... Like you just said, that is Raheem. Like, no matter what happens through the game, he'll keep getting in those positions over and over again. And like you said, it paid off. But the, the, the reverse pass from Edison to start with, even though he slipped, was, was outstanding. And Cancelo's first... It was pretty much after that one-touch football all the way until it ended up in the back of the net. And Cancelo's header that takes you around the corner. And then a nice little set. And he, Cancelo just keeps running. And I'm like, it's like the 87th minute and he's just still going. And obviously Grealish slides him in. He, he, I think he tried to take a shot, but it takes a little bit of a deflection. 
drops off to Raheem Sterling, he taps it in, and I get um, an assist from my fantasy football team. So thank you, Cancelo. I mean, thank you, Kevin De Bruyne, as I've been telling these guys. I picked up 72 points on my fantasy football tonight from Kevin De Bruyne because I captained him, so I am absolutely and utterly thrilled. Um, you mentioned the fact that Cancelo kept running. We scored that goal in the 84th minute. We had another chance straight after it as well, Sean. What does that say about the mentality of our team, that even at 4-1 up, 5-1 up, we are still trying, we're still going to the last minute? Yeah, I mean, it, it, it just shows you that the boys were very aware of knowing that it wasn't just about winning the game, but could we win and get some sort of margin or gap in regards to goals. So he's, he's driving on. Uh, we've got fullbacks that are going and bombing on, and you're thinking, well, would we not just be concerned with keeping it at 4-1 at, at or 5-1? It's like, no, players are still overlapping and getting themselves into the box. But it's all beautiful play. You would, you, you're looking and thinking, yeah, he needs to, he needs to go forward 10 yards or he needs to drive inside. And, and they're just playing some awesome football and, and their, their ability to understand that one player, you know, sort of um, moves out of a space, another player appears there. I, I, I really am like lost for words in terms of how we play. And, and again, no, De Bruyne, De Bruyne was man in the match after 20 minutes, but it's almost wrong to not mention the other players. Yeah. You know, players are performing at a high level. Gundogan, you're looking and you think, well, has he, did he give the ball away tonight? And you think, we ain't mentioned him. Yeah. But he's just going about his business. Uh, Sachenko, Sachenko, uh, Bernardo, the energy he's given with the quality. And, and I know we're raved a lot because you must do when somebody, a midfielder scores you four goals, but the quality within the team um, is, is breath, it's just breathtaking. Now, I do want to talk a little bit more about this defensive situation that we have. Is it a concern for you, Sean, that Amrit Laporte did go off and we saw him on the bench sort of iced up on his knee? Um, it's more of a concern for me in the ways of I don't li like to see players get injured. Um, I think going into the next game, whoever was going to be in the centre of, center of the defence, would have had a hard time against Antonio and Gerard Bowen. But no, because I think I feel like we have the ball all the time. And if I remember the days back when Pep was Barcelona manager, Mascarano played centre-back for, I think, pretty much nearly a full season. Mm. I think if, if we keep the ball, we know we can, and we don't try to make too many mistakes, I think we'll be fine because we're, we're in control of the game. And it's just that saying, if you have the ball, the other team can't score. So I think if we lose the ball in, in the right areas and not in the bad areas, then we'll be fine. Do you think he took Fernandinho off Goats towards the end to rest, rest him, to him. save him, because he knows that he's going to have to play at the weekend in that centre-back position? Well, I mean, the obvious thinking is yes, because Fernandinho can play right-back, centre-back, defensive midfielder. He, you know, if you want him to, he'll play eight. He could play wide. The, the guy has such an intelligence. I think he's been, I think he's been rested. Um, but we also have young, young quality centre backs, CJ Riley and Betty. These, these two centre backs coming through. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if Pep goes, listen, this is your time now for, for one of them to come in and, um, and, and play there. Who knows? But we know that Fernandinho is more than capable of doing a job there. So I think he's probably pulled Fernandinho off to rest him. Imagine making your full debut in the game that City win the league, Sean. That would be nuts, wouldn't it, for one of them? I'd be so excited. I'm nervous all at the same time. But it, it, it's what you live for, isn't it? And people say, like, when you're a kid, especially a team like this, how they're meant to break through. Well, that's how. Like, it, it's not nice to say, but your chances come when either somebody's suspended or somebody gets injured. This chance might... He might become the hero, and then it's... Pep doesn't need to find another young centre-back because he knows he's got one there and then he'll start playing more and he'll grow into the game. So it's all about timing and luck and the timing right now for me is perfect. My thinking is, listen, these guys trained the first team, these are quality players and I think Pep doesn't, I don't think he does the sort of, you know, soft thing of just giving a player the opportunity. I think they earn it and I think they're around the first team because the quality and they're good enough. So if he sees fit that are ready to step in and he'll go yeah this is your time um but this is this is what we have in terms of the academy players that come through it's it's quality players that we're, we're developing and you know i see it firsthand even at the young age group but we were talking about you know um cj riley and Mbete. these these are quality players so i wouldn't also be surprised if pep says you know what this is the game for, for one of you two or both of you to be involved in it wow and why didn't 
didn't Kevin De Bruyne go off at any point? So we brought on Riyad Mahrez and Jack Grealish. Scored four goals. Obviously, we know how pivotal he is to the team. Why do you think he wasn't rested or anything? Because I think how he had the game, the game by the scruff of the neck. I don't think I would have took it off, only on the purpose I wanted him to score five. But I think that he controlled the game in every aspect. I think when he had the ball, he dictated. Obviously, Gundogan played a major part in that, but I think he dictated along the front. He knew when to slow it down. He knew when to open up the game where he was finding passes that most people didn't see. He was spreading the play like for the last opportunity that come up where I think Mares got slipped in the ball that he paid, most people wouldn't play that square pass, but because he knows he can nail it, he does it, Jack brings it down, and we create a chance from it. So I think it's not always necessary, especially when there's two games left, to have to worry about taking that player off, because normally adrenaline in takes you through them. I'm just be, I think I'm just being overly nervous yeah. and cautious. I, I think there's a part of me that thinks, I think there was an opportunity for attacking midfielder to score five goals. Okay. And because every record that's been out there, Man City and Pep Guardiola seems to have broken. And I think there may have been a little, a grave showing, there may have been this, this thing about potentially if he scores a fifth goal as a midfielder, is there a midfielder out there scored five goals? We were talking off her about people like uh, Frank Lampard, goal scoring. Uh, yes, would have scored hat trick. Not sure if he would have scored like four goals, but this, I think, was the opportunity there. And I think it would have been a, a bit of that probably in his mind because I was thinking, get him wrapped up. I'm like, <laughs> <"Keep him on." laughs> yeah. So it was that sort of conversation we were having. Yeah. Lovely. Well, our next game. So we did you have a couple of a couple of days rest, a couple of days to hopefully Amrit Laporte recover. Um, is on Sunday when we take on West Ham away. It is a 2 p.m. kickoff. I will be here in our lovely shiny new studio, and we will be packing the sofas out for that one. Well, I'll be joined by David James, Trevor Sinclair, and Nadem Anua. Um, a lot of the games. Well, pretty much the last three or four games that we've had, I keep hearing, is this the one that City are going to slip up? Is this the toughest one? for City. People have been saying West Ham for a while now though, Sean, because of course they are, you know, they're still in the hunt for this European place. What sort of game are you expecting? Oh, it's going to be really hard. Um, it, will, it will definitely be really hard, especially at West Ham. I just think just the way they play, they're a very balanced team on, in general. They're good at set pieces. So it's going to be I have a lot for us to deal with. But I think the fact that we've just won the last two games, it puts us in a much more positive position. I don't think we will lose to West Ham. I personally think we'll win. It just won't be as easy as the last two looked. I'm not saying they were easy, but the score obviously makes people think that it was easy. But um, yeah, it will be, it'll be a tough game when you've got people like Antonio and Gerard Bowen that don't stop running both ways and run down those alleys where the centre-backs don't really want to go. They're, they're really going to cause problems, but I think we still have enough playing the way we play today to go there and come away with something. Yeah, they, they do have some, some phenomenal players. Of course, Declan Rice being linked with everybody yeah. at the minute goes. Yeah. If it comes to us, it's like a cheat code, isn't it? <laughs> it's like, it's like it a Chico. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's a quality player, but again, whenever we've come up against teams that have quality individuals, it isn't about that individual. It, it is about how we play. And I think, you know, we think about West Ham, Sean's absolutely right. I think a key part is not giving up free kicks and set pieces because they are a team at the land of the Giants in terms of they have at least six or seven players that are 6'2 and, and, and sort of taller. And then when you think we don't have a regular sort of Santa backs and you know that sort of situation we will probably be struggling with a bit of height so I think that'll be a key thing that uh, I think Pep will be making a lot of noise if we give away cheap free kicks where they can sort of put balls into the box so other than that I think we will we will dominate smother them uh, and again it'd be similar to tonight being being alert to the counter attack but again you keep hearing about West Ham while I keep hearing, when are we going to get our six goals? Tonight was, uh, you know, a five. Newcastle was five. I keep hearing, when are we getting six? So maybe it's, maybe it's West Ham. Oh, I love that. I'll take one. That... I'll take one nil. Yeah, I'll take one nil and three <laughs> points as well. You said you would take one nil and then you predicted four. Yeah, you but did. only in you this did. game. Okay. <laughs> um, I've got a stat that might ease you there as well, worrying about set pieces. Do you know how many set piece goals we've conceded this season? The I, I would Excluding say the Including penalties. We're one of the least. I'll, uh, conceded? Three. I reckon four. One. 
Yeah, I knew we was down there. I knew it was low, yeah. yeah but, we have scored 20 goals from set pieces. We're the top, right? We're top in the Premier League. Yeah, scored yeah. 20, wow. excluding penalties. We've conceded just one, so plus 90 is the highest on record in a single Premier League campaign since 2006. See? 2000 and... See, breaking records again. Uh, uh, exactly. I mean, that, this is phenomenal because we are known as a footballing team. We play through the thirds, but to, to have this racket, least goals against or set pieces, shows you how solid we are. As, as, a, as a team. Pep's just ticking all the boxes. This guy's just oh, a yeah. genius. Of course, Liverpool don't have a league game this weekend. They're in the FA Cup final on Saturday against Chelsea. Um, how do you think that affects the fact that we are playing and for the first time they then have the game in hand? We are playing first. How does that affect the mentality or does it? Um, I think it could. I don't think it will affect the mentality of obviously the cup final. But I think... If City go and do what we think they can do and go and win and take the three points, then for me, they, I think they will just say, all right, league's over now. That's perfect. Think? Right. Yeah. If, if City win against West Ham, league's over. If we get a point, the league's over. Because our goal difference now is plus seven ahead of Liverpool. Mm. And of course, if we beat West Ham, it would be at least plus eight going into the last game for yeah. us. Oh, goodness. Yeah, they have, a, they have a great attack, but I don't see them sort of pulling that, that sort no, of margin no, back. No, no, no. Um, and that's just assuming we were to just score one goal. Um, and the form that we won in the last couple of games, I wouldn't put it past us to, to score another three goals or more. Of course, then, if we did win, we'd be looking at Liverpool playing on the Tuesday night against Southampton, I think it is. And we'd be keeping an eye on... That result well, as they're, well. They're going to rotate, aren't they? Regardless of what way we look at after playing, obviously, in the, in the cup final, I think they'll rotate for Tuesday night. I don't think they'll play the same team yeah. back to back. And Southampton seem to play well against some of the bigger teams, but they always play very well against us. Yeah. So hopefully yeah. it changes play places and they play really well against Liverpool. But it won't be easy at Southampton. No, and Pap, he'll probably be playing some night golf. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. For Pep, it's about what we do, and he'll be just listening. I think he'll, as, as a manager, he'll be just thinking, Liverpool are going to win their games. Yeah. I'm not thinking about them. We just need to win our games, and he'll approach it that way, not be bothered whether they win, whether they draw. He'll be still just wanting to win every game that we have in front of us. And I think that's because of the fortunate situation we're in. We don't need to worry about Liverpool. Liverpool need to worry about what we're doing. Yeah. Of course, our game on Sunday away at West Ham, we have this phenomenal um, unbeaten away record now. We were beaten by Spurs on the opening day of the season, and since then we have been unbeaten away from home. Did you hear Alistair Mann in the commentary say that if you just took our away points, we'd be 10th in the league? This is... this. It's almost like before it used to be, if you play away, it's going to be tough, it'll be difficult, the, the, the crowd, you've got to manage the game. And, I mean, our players, when we play away, it's, it's almost like playing at home. It's like playing at home. <laughs> yeah. So I and it'd have to give a shout out to the away fans because oh, they yeah. go and they're just, you know, their voices nonstop. But the, to, to produce that consistency away from home, this is, it's insane. Yeah, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. The away fans are phenomenal. Like yeah. the, the noise that you hear every week. Why do you think we're so good away from home? Not that we're not good at home. We've lost two games at home. Uh, well, I, I just think because we're, we're good, fans go to games knowing, like, we're, we're going to deliver. You know, we're going to deliver. We're going to champions. No, I just think it's a, it's a difference, isn't it? Like, if people come to the Etihad, like, their mind frames, OK, let's defend. Whereas when we go to them, they're like, OK, we're at home. Let's, let's give it's it a go. Let's try and get an early and goal. And before yeah, they know, go on. <laughs> yeah, so it, it's just a different perspective. And teams don't realise, home or away, if you leave spaces... Yeah. City will destroy you. Yeah, because I'm thinking, you think about tonight, De Bruyne pops up in areas and, and like how he nerves to go into those areas and then still be so effective. And he looks to his left and it's, it's the player three yards to his left. He looks around this side, it's another player four yards and there's a player in front of him three yards. And so he's in this loop and you're thinking he ain't got no space, but he can one touch it around the corner into a player's path and just kill the defence. And that, that's the amazing thing about the quality of players we have. You think, how are they arriving in these spaces? And how are they able to still give such, you know, uh, effective balls that can hurt a team? Uh, it, it's beyond me. It really is. 
but it is an absolute joy to watch. It can remain beyond me as long as we keep playing this incredible football. Thank you, Sean Wright Phillips and Sean Gota for joining us in the new studio this evening. Always a pleasure to watch the game with you. And thank you all at home for joining us on Match Day Live. So City have done it. They have beaten Wolves 5-1. That means two Premier League games to go. Two wins and we will retain our Premier League title. I will be back here on Sunday as we look to that West Ham game. And of course, we'll also be having an eye on the Women's FA Cup final as City take on Chelsea at Wembley. Now, Blues, not that you would ever forget, but Friday sees the 10-year anniversary of 9320. I need to say no more. You say that number, everybody knows what we're talking about. Still gives me goosebumps. It's going to give me goosebumps again in a second because City Studios have created an incredible documentary speaking to the players from the day, reliving all of the magical moments of that season. It's coming out on Friday, 10 year anniversary. Take a little look at this now and I'll see you again on Sunday. Arteta! It's finished. It's finished. Manchester City trail Manchester United by eight points with only six games to play. We were messing something up that we might not get again. I could see a kid crying and, and from that moment you realise, wow, we probably blew it. We knew we had to win every game. It's Carlos Tevez! Trey, what a goal! Potentially a title winner! Captain Fantastic, it is again. Come on the hour, come on the captain. Of all the players on the park to get the goal, it's Pablo Zabaleta. In the blink of an eye, you're on that pitch thinking what the hell's just happened here. Unbelievable! The world is on its head! They are dumbfounded! <laughs> Maybe we have another chance, you know? I think that one of the best moments in my life. Manchester City is still alive here. Balotelli, Aguero! 